Here's Davis for three. That's his second from downtown. Bledsoe, that's a two. He had a foot on the line. A three-pointer for Jason Tatum. Now they say a two. He had a foot on the line. Foot, 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 foot on the line. 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 Momoko Anjo's 2014 awkward comedy, 0.5 millimeters, is a soothing journey brought with great eccentric characters and situations, while narratively grounded in realistic filmmaking. 0.5 mm is a chaotic reflection on the elderly. It's an amazing feat of balance because 0.5 mm tackles the elderly and death, but manages it in a very fluffy manner. That isn't disrespectful. That's why this video is going to be about my five favorite 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencils. So exactly what the fuck am I talking about? It's pretty rare to find someone after a certain age to be the face of a creative team behind a blockbuster film or the next big indie hit. It's also rare for an old person to get their breakout film. So what ends up happening is that stories and characters who are old today, they're kind of just a fantasy of what a younger generation imagines what being old is. That's why there are common themes that old characters have in media. They usually are mentors or teachers. They, as a present being, doesn't matter as much. What matters really is the lessons they teach for the younger generation. This is especially obvious when you look at how death is involved with the elderly characters. There is another Media can't even let old people just die because even in death, they have to teach. But what makes death and the elderly even more weird in today's media is that there's almost a sense that death is something that is a positive aspect of being old. There's like a spiritual and magical answer the elderly have found because they're facing death. Elderly characters realize how meaningful life is and at the end of all of it, they're happy. They're never alone because of family, friends, or a significant person who they connect with through all the existential actions they do because they know they're going to die. Death, for the old, is what makes life meaningful. Now, I'm not saying in real life the old don't experience these feelings, but I think it's also fair to say there's probably a lot of people who don't. There's old people who don't want to die and are super scared of it. There's old people who hate being alive or they view their lives as meaningless. And a lot of old people are incredibly lonely. 0.5 mm is a film that embraces human weakness. The elderly in 0.5 mm are not teachers. They don't understand life better than you. Sawa a caretaker who blackmails elderly men so she can freeload off of them. A lot of the times, the elderly view her as an unwanted pest, but her presence ends up filling different holes of loneliness they have. Most of the characters in this film aren't characters you would typically root for. They're perverts, thieves, and abusive. Yet, the film doesn't judge them. For 0.5 mm, the old do shitty things because the old are people, and people do shitty things. The elderly are people who act for themselves, think for themselves, and do things for themselves. The film's attitude towards death shares this mentality. Death is a big part of being old, but more importantly, it's a big part of being alive and human. It's just a little louder when you're old 
and it's harder to brush under the rug compared to when you're young and strong. Understandably, diving deep into a particular old man's fear of death or claiming a particular old man's life has been fairly meaningless feels a little bit like a taboo. That's why 0.5mm's ability to dilute any discomfort while talking about these themes is pretty amazing. Since I've already put on my fashionable weave glasses, I want to explain how 0.5mm discusses these discomfortable themes by comparing it to a genre in manga called Iyashike. According to TV tropes, Iyashike is Japanese for healing and is a term used to describe manga created with a specific purpose of having a healing or soothing effect on the audience. These stories are oftentimes relaxing, lack conflict, emphasize nature, and they're about the mundane and the little delights in life. There is one particular pattern I'd like to elaborate a little on. The idea that Yashike has no conflict is a little bit of a misunderstanding. In my opinion, Yashike actually has a lot of conflict, but the characters sort of accept it and move on instead. In other words, it's not that conflict doesn't happen, it's more that conflict never gets resolved. There doesn't need to be an answer or resolution. A great example of this is the typhoon scene in YYK. Alpha is warned about a typhoon so she leaves her home for better shelter. After the typhoon ends, she comes back home only to find it completely destroyed. However, when her friend comes to check on her, he finds her just playing her musical instrument in front of the broken wreckage. YYK refuses to give this scene of conflict any resolution, but maintains a sort of warm and melancholic feeling where sad emotions are actually complicated. 0.5mm shares a lot of these same patterns. These are the type of scenes that stories from the Yashike genre use to manipulate your emotions so you can feel refreshed, warm, and comforted, even during more sad scenes. Warm moments in 0.5mm are plentiful because Sawa's relationship with each individual elderly person always breeds conflict that never actually seems to be resolved. This quote, which is where the film gets its title, reflects on all the small relationships Sawa takes part in. The warm feelings come from the irony of having small steps that don't mean anything but do point to a spiritual possibility of something larger. 0.5mm calls it a revolution, but I truly believe it's this friction that makes these visual experiences comfy. Plus, the blankets, of course. He's a guitar wizard! Holy shit! Guitar wizard! Just like Iyashike, environment in 0.5mm contributes. You'll see shots of nature landscapes, but also with roads. There are definitely crowds of people, but they're never bustling. There's also the Japanese house interiors. These locations give a sense of quietness, solitude, a comfortable loneliness, minimalism, and kind of just simplicity. For example, these Japanese homes, the way 0.5mm uses them as symmetrical shots, allows the scenes to feel more simple. The clear sliding door sounds, the small rooms, all of these things give a sense of closeness, a sense of mundaneness in each of the characters' lives. This lifestyle is partnered with other mundane scenes, such as singing karaoke, cleaning, shopping, and of course, food. There are so many food scenes in this film that are all simple, small dishes. Mundane events also create a specific rhythm that helps release tension, which is only really one part of 0.5mm's multifaceted and impressive control of rhythm. To explain, 
0.5 mm is incredibly awkward funny. And it's in this type of rhythm, 0.5 mm's use of awkward comedy really excels because it breaks up the rhythm in the film. That destruction is the perfect space for the film's darker themes to thrive in. It allows the uncomfortable questions of the film to be squished in between two happier scenes. These scenes can be either mundane or funny, but it gives the questions space to feel lighter without losing authenticity. Songwriting is tension and release. You set up an expectation and then you make people wait just a second. And then you fulfill the expectation. Rhythm is very important to comedy in pretty similar ways to how it's important to music. Comedy also relies on tension, a pause, and making your audience wait for something that's supposed to happen. Awkwardness is the abnormal manipulation of this pause. 0.5 mm uses this theory and puts the pauses and tensions in the wrong rhythm. That's how awkward comedy works. It gives you a rhythm, but messes with it. Rhythm isn't just about time though. 0.5 mm's plentiful mundane activities set up a sort of normal and ordinary rhythm. But whenever something extremely oddball or exaggerated happens, it creates an awkward but funny tone for these scenes. So there's a discomfort within the comedy itself. Therefore, when 0.5 mm deals with nuances on uncomfortable questions, your discomfort with that question aligns with the discomfort that you feel from the awkward comedy. I've explained how 0.5 mm brings lightheartedness into its complicated questions, but I haven't explained why I appreciate this. I'll be the first to admit that it's a little unfair of me to find any sort of universality lesson from this film, because this film is very specifically about Japanese old men, including uniquely specific themes like Japanese masculinity and Japanese youth. Yet, I think 0.5 mm is a film that stays faithful to human weakness. All humans have strengths and weaknesses, and usually your strengths are highlighted because of your individuality, not your age. Socially though, we do particularly highlight the elderly's weaknesses. Let me be clear though, faith is not romanticization. Weakness is not beautiful, strong, or meaningful. On the other hand, there's also not really work to be done to fix them. Simply put, human weakness just exists. In 0.5 mm, human weakness is just a curious misbeat of rhythm that happens. The awkward rhythm allows for human weakness to take a form of its own. After each conflict, all that happens is someone, whether it be a character or me, I don't even know, takes a 0.5 millimeter step forward. Whatever forward means. What's up? Weakness is humanity's awkward partner in life. Fried rice is my favorite food. Fun and four is a super good. 